Hey, 951 listeners, it's your host, Casey Lovell. And if you have ever played softball, you just love the sport of softball, you know the softball world, you've been in it, then man, do I have two great guest speakers for you today. So on today's episode, I am excited to say that I am joined by two softball legends, Dot Richardson and Leah Amico. And yes, I got really, really excited when they agreed to be on the podcast. I was like, oh my goodness, can't believe that they agreed to be on the podcast. This is so great. But I got so excited because both Dot and Leah have made such a big impact on the softball world through playing at the highest level collegiately, but playing at the highest level by being Olympic athletes for Team USA. But what I think is really cool, even more than all of their athletic contributions and successes and accolades, is that they have impacted the softball world through their faith in Christ. That's a huge impact they've had on the softball world. Both Dot and Leah are on fire for the Lord, and you guys are going to hear that today. It's evident in how they speak, and it's evident in how they have lived out their lives. So in our conversation today, I talked with Dot and Leah on the topic of handling pressure and really how to stay centered under pressure and not let fear, worry, or other negative emotions control you when you're in these situations. And I think a lot of athletes out there, you know what it's like to be in a pressure-filled situation. And that pressure-filled situation, it doesn't even have to be a big game-winning major situation. It could be as simple as, okay, bases are loaded. It's only the second inning. We've got two outs, but I'm up to bat. I want to drive a run in. And so you're kind of in this pressure-filled situation. And if you feel pressure, then it's important to know how to handle it without letting these negative emotions take over. And so this conversation that we're having today is a conversation I think every athlete needs to hear because it applies to everyone, no matter what sport you play. So before we get going, before we dive in, I want to tell you all a little bit more about our guest speakers. So I will start with Dot. Dot Richardson, she formerly played in college at UCLA, played softball there, and has won two Olympic gold medals in softball with Team USA. So she's an Olympic gold medalist, has so many accolades um, in college and on the Olympic level with softball. She has also has a master's degree in exercise, physiology, and health, and also has an MD degree, which is a doctorate degree for those that don't know. So she's got a master's and a doctorate degree. And right now she's currently the head softball coach at Liberty University. And I have to shout out Lipscomb and say go Bisons because Liberty joined Lipscomb's conference a couple years ago after I graduated, but they joined the conference. So love Liberty Dot, but I love Lipscomb more. So go bison got to show some bison pride and throw that in there to all my Lipscomb fans out there (laughs) so moving on to our next guest speaker our next guest speaker is Leah Amico her last name was O'Brien but she's married now with a family but Leah played softball at the University of Arizona where she won three national championships with her team and then went on to be a three-time softball Olympic gold medalist with Team USA. So yes, her and Dot were both gold medalists, both had so many accolades in the softball world, so many individual successes. And with Leah, she now currently travels the country speaking. She holds clinics. She also works with FCA and does some commentating for college softball on the side with ESPN and some with Westwood One Radio. So again, Needless to say, both Dot and Leah have had incredible, incredible athletic careers and played at such a high level. And that's really one of the reasons they have so much wisdom to give when it comes to facing pressure as an athlete, because they both played at the highest level you can play at. But I think they have even more wisdom to give when it comes to playing and living for Christ as an athlete, whether that is on or off the field. So I am 
pumped for everyone to hear this episode. So without further ado, let's dive in. Dot and Leah, I am so excited that you could join me on the podcast today. I was so excited when I reached out and you guys said yes and that you would take the time to do this. I know even with everything going on, everyone has busy schedules. So Dot and Leah, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. Thanks for having us, Casey. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so excited to talk to both of you and get your insight. And so Dot, I want to start with you before we dive into our topic today of talking about, you know, staying centered under pressure and how you can do that as an athlete in your sport and in life. How about you just tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do? Wow. Well, I am a child of God, first and foremost. For me, I uh, knew when I was a little girl that I loved athletics so much and God gave me the gift in it and um, just played it. One of the problems was I was Girls were not supposed to be athletic, I guess, when I was younger. I was not able to play on any organized team. Um, but eventually uh, got the opportunity to play fast pitch softball when I was 10. And it was actually a women's team. And a couple of years later, uh, ended up playing for the Orlando Rebels, which were a women's major fast pitch softball team. And the rest, I guess you could say, is history. You know, in high school, I played volleyball, basketball, softball track and field and tennis, love all games, all sports, and uh, ended up going to UCLA, getting my degree undergraduate there after transferring from one year at Western Illinois. And after graduating from UCLA, I got my master's degree at Adelphi University in Long Island, New York, where I coached for the first time. Then I went to medical school at the University of Louisville in Kentucky. Then I got my orthopedic residency done at USC in Southern California. And in the meantime, you know, been able to play the sport. My first USA team is at the age of 17. Five world championships, five Pan American Games, many international friendship tournaments, and two Olympic gold medals. As you know, currently coaching at a, a Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia, and uh, one of the largest Christian universities in the world. So the Lord has uh, continued to bless me uh, with uh, softball and excited to be continue. Uh, you know, competing and even as a coach, being able to make a difference in that way. Yeah, absolutely. Leah, could you do the same? Could you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yes, I'm Leah Amico, three-time Olympic gold medalist with USA Softball. I played right field in the 1996 and the 2000 Olympic Games. And then in the 2004 Olympics, I moved over to first base. I was a three-time national champion at the University of Arizona. That's kind of where I got my, my start my freshman year. Um, I was spending some time a little bit in the outfield and I pitched part of the time and I was a designated player when I was not doing that. And we went on to win the national championship. I got a hit in the championship game against Lisa Fernandez, the only hit she gave up the entire game and I got an RBI on it. And so, um, that to me just opened my eyes to what softball offered. And then we won two more national championships while I was there. And, um, I played two two years in center field. And then I went back my senior year to first base. And so finished my career with three national championships as a three-time All-American, as well as a three-time academic All-American. And then I graduated, continued to play for Team USA. I got married um, before my second Olympic Games in 2000 and actually was the first mom on Team USA. My son, Jake, I had him in 2001. And when he was three years old, I won my third and final Olympic gold medal. And so since then, um, I have two more boys. So I have three total and I travel the country. I do speaking. I do clinics around the country. Um, I work a lot with fellowship for Christian athletes. I do some commentating for college softball with ESPN as well as Westwood One Radio um, at the Women's College World Series. I do the finals. And so I've had a lot of opportunities through this sport to be able to share my knowledge and just the impact my experiences have had. Yeah, that's awesome. And I love how both of your stories intertwine a little bit. And now you're working together with this organization, Champions Within. Can one of you really quickly 
tell me a little bit about Champions Within and what it is. Well, my husband, Bob Pinto, uh, just, you know, originally he uh, founded the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Softball Ministry uh, for that sports specific ministry and then coached with me uh, here at Liberty. And then since then, he has now just been working with the local FCA and just felt the Lord calling him to come up with Champions Within, which basically uh, is an outreach to spread the gospel through whatever avenues or venue the Lord opens up for us. And right now with COVID-19, it's pretty much been a lot of Zoom meetings and podcasts and different things like that, usually on Thursday evenings around 7, 7.30 East Coast time. Uh, but it's been really great to just spread the gospel and share stories through sport and uh, the champions within our coaches, Patty Gasso and myself and Olympians uh, with Leah and Jenny Finch. And um, and then the other is uh, Jim Gasso also is a big part of it and Bob. And uh, it's just been a really amazing blessing to be able to just get out there and spread the gospel and uh, make a difference uh, in the lives of others for the Lord's kingdom. Absolutely. I love that. And when I stumbled upon Champions Within, because I had never heard of Champions Within before, I was really intrigued by what you do. And I was very much myself involved in ministries like FCA throughout high school and college. So these ministries centered around sports and faith or even just faith, I'm very much drawn to very much love because obviously, you know, as a follower of Christ, I believe that there is so much of a need for these organizations love what you guys do and love supporting you and what you're doing that. And really, I just want to go into transition over to our topic of staying centered under pressure and how we can do that, because we know that there are pressure situations, especially in our sport. And we know softball is a sport of failure. So you definitely feel some pressure in big situations there, but also in life and the everyday. So Leah, if you could start out with this, I wanted to know what are a few different ways that you stayed center under pressure or during big situations, important at bats, whatever it was, how did you stay centered and calm in those situations and not let fear control you? I think for me, one of the biggest and most important aspects of my game was my preparation. For me, I was such a feel player to where I had to get in the cage prior to the game. And when I felt like I was seeing the ball well and hitting it well, it didn't matter who my opponent was. And that's what allowed me to have a confidence and a, just that positive mindset. And then kind of that quiet peace, like being aggressive, but being under control to know, okay, it's, it's my game. And so um, I, that as well as I believe just the, um, just how highly competitive I am as a person um, and wanting to be my very best for my team. I was very much about team. And so mindset is huge, but what played into my mindset is the preparation and the time that I put in trying to master um, my skills, both defensively and offensively. And even when I started my college career, I was a pitcher. And so the extra time that I would put in workouts, the you know extra at bats, I would try to get in the cages prior to practice after practice when I really needed it. And so for me, it was all about preparation. Yeah. And growing up, my dad, a lot of times would say that preparation is what produces confidence in athletes a lot of the time. And I never really forgot that because I always equated it to in school, you know, if I had a test, I would feel much more confident about that test if I studied for if I prepared for it, you know, not saying you may not have some jitters or some, you know, in a game, some excitement, but if you've prepared, it's also a little bit of that peace of mind of, hey, I've worked hard. I've done all I can, can, can do. I have prepared the best that I can. And so, yeah, I like that. My dad was a big person on preparation and putting the time in to say, hey, I've done the work and I'm going to let the results take care of themselves kind of no matter what they are, no matter what that outcome is. So I love that and I completely agree. So along that question, Doc, can you talk about that a little as well of a few different ways that you would stay centered 
and that you didn't let fear take you over in specific situations? Well, first and foremost, I always knew that God had given me a gift and I was denied expressing that gift, as I mentioned in the intro, when I was a young girl, because I had to watch my brothers play, even though I was as good, if not better, you know, than them. But the boys didn't have a problem with it. They picked me first for their pickup games after school. (laughs) But society said, well, too bad. You're a good athlete and a girl. Just you have no team to play for. So I would say my prayers at night, you know, Lord, why did you give me this talent with no opportunities? And and those are words of a child, as I know now, because, you know, God's plan is so much better than ours and than what we can possibly imagine. You know, Ephesians 3, 20, 21 and Jeremiah 29, 11 and 12, you know, just and uh, to throw out scripture for those that uh, are aware of it or not. You know, look at the scripture in the Bible and just the Lord speaking to us that. It's just trusting in the gifts you have and being denied the opportunity. It's like Leah said, when, when I had the opportunity to play and even practice, man, I was all in. I mean, all in. There's a saying that I have being one with the ball where nothing else exists. No distractions exist. And your goal as an athlete is to get to that level. Some people call it in the zone, right? Um, for me, it was just man, just, I felt God's pleasure, right? When I play, it was like nothing could compare to it. Um, And I just knew that God had given me the opportunity and I'm going to seize every second of it. And I'm going to love every moment because in, in a blink of the eye, it could be gone. Right. And my, my strive is I felt that if you're going to do something, you need to do it right. And it's not just what my parents taught me, but It was also that you're honoring the Lord doing that. If you're too much in fear or in doubt in anything you do, whether it's in competition or, you know, in a job or whatever, it's, you're really not honoring the Lord if you're not giving it your best. And there was a saying that I actually patented for a while um, or trademarked, which was be the best you could be. And that kind of sums it up, right? Is we are the princesses of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And our identity is not in things and it's not in our titles or accomplishments. It's really about, can others see Christ in us? Can they look and say, what's different? And the platform that you have, what do you do with it? Is it all about yourself? You know, is it all about team? Uh, Or is it all about, to me, the biggest team of all? You know, we're on the winning team with the Lord. Absolutely. And I I really love what you said there because it hits on perspective. What perspective do we have with what we're given in life, what we have the ability to do, the skills and the talents that God has given us? And it made me think of going to church. So with the coronavirus and everything going on this past Sunday, so my church hadn't met since March 15th, but this past Sunday, we were able to meet in church. There was just a lot of restrictions that the state had said, okay, we're going to start to allow you to go back, but there's restrictions. You know, you can't be sitting in a pew that's right behind someone else, you know, all these, all these crazy things. But when you said that, it made me think about how much you appreciate something when it gets taken away from you for a time or when you never had it for a while. Like you said, you weren't able to play and you had to watch other people play. You had to watch your brother's. So then when you're given the opportunity to play, to do that, to be in that situation, you appreciate it so much more because you know what it's like to not have it and you know that it might be taken away. So I love that because it shows that we need to have a perspective of knowing that everything we do, even waking up every day is a blessing and an opportunity that not everyone gets. And playing softball is an opportunity not everyone gets, especially you know, you and Leah playing at such a high level and getting all those really cool, great opportunities. And so I really love that. And then the last thing you said, I want to repeat because it's great. And we all need to hear over and over is just need to honor the Lord in whatever we do anyway. And so when we're facing those pressure or big situations, having a focus on God and having a focus on what really matters can help calm us, but it can also give us perspective, say, if the situation doesn't turn out how we would like. Well, what does the Bible say? 
it says in James, it says, um, you know, through trials and tribulations, we should find pure joy. Absolutely. And you're like, what? Yeah. You know, you mean when, when something goes terrible, it goes wrong. We hate it. We're miserable. Like we're all these things just seem to be crashing down on us. How can we have pure joy? Well, it's like you just said, and Leah has mentioned, it's about, we're not alone. It's in those times that we realize we can't do it on our own. And it's not about this world, right? It's about God has got our back and he is there with us. And I think that, you know, that is something in, in trials and tribulations when we fail on the field, do we blame ourselves? Do we blame others? Or do we realize it's a time to learn? And it's really the Lord teaching us a lesson in all that we do. And the failures end up making us stronger. You know, ask Leah, you know, in the times when we fall short of our goals and things maybe don't work out right, you just don't give up, right? You trust God's plan. He's got a plan for us and it's to prosper. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I had another question in my mind that I wanted to ask and it'll probably, we've hit on it, but I want both of you to just elaborate on it more because like I said in the beginning, big situations or feeling pressure, even feeling worry, anxiety, or fear, those come within our sport, but they also come outside our sport, whether, you know, you're in school and it's with a test or it's something with your job or even in, you know, your family or faith life. So Leah, if you could talk about how is your faith really important in those situations and how can it affect how we handle the situation and also how we react and learn from the situation? Yes. For me, it was during college, really my third year in college that my faith came into play and I started following Jesus and wanting to know more and learn. I had grown up believing in God, but it wasn't until my third year in college to where I had a teammate who impacted me by how she lived out her faith in a powerful way and she knew God's word. And so through that, I thought, okay, so how do I learn to apply this to the field? How do I bring this aspect? Because God wants to transform every area of our lives and wants to be the center, including my sports career. And so I learned kind of early on to have have a focal point to have a verse for me it was Philippians 4 13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and I didn't know a lot about the Bible but I had read that verse and I you know put it on my glove on my batting gloves that was another way of helping me also kind of have that confidence and that preparation of just and and ultimately the word I would use is perspective I began to see that this talent that I had been given, even this desire to succeed and to be competitive and to be a team player and be coachable, so much of that was tied into who God had created me to be. I had to work very hard for it, but those were also some areas that God had had put in my life. And so I wanted to glorify him out there. I wanted to be an example. God had to show me and teach me many times to have perspective of the bigger picture, to make sure that in the bad times, I wasn't having an attitude and allowing my emotions to dictate and control um, not only how I responded, you know, um, maybe with just, you know, uh, the way um, I would treat other people, but maybe just even, you know, my own emotional, you know, experiences. Um, but even this bigger perspective, I walked off of game after a couple years of learning, you know, growing in my faith, learning God's word, going to Bible study. And I'll never forget walking off and, and seeing I had a bad game. I was not in a good mood. And I walked off and this, this fan, um, Stephen, I was at all of our games, was in a wheelchair. He was probably five or six years older than me. And he just had the hugest smile on his face waiting to give me a high five after the game. And I'm, you know, frustrated and mad. And immediately God just put on my heart to have perspective that I need to be thankful that I could run the bases, that Stephen finds joy watching me go out and use the gifts God's given me and the opportunities. And so that really helped me. Um, being on that field, also knowing that I was there um, as an example to my teammates as well, that it's not just about me. I, obviously, that was generally my heart, but in pressure moments, a lot of times you feel like it all falls on you. And not only that, I think even the biggest thing I would say is identity. I think a lot of athletes struggle because we can find our worth and value on how we perform. It's hard for us not to. That's our na nature. That's in our flesh. You feel really good when you're performing very well. It feels good to have a lot of attention and people praising you. But then what about when you don't do well? Does that mean all of a sudden from day to day, you know, one day you're, you're great, you have 
worth the next day, you mean nothing. And God just really used his word and his truth to just impact my life, to kind of get me more settled and more, um, just more uh, kind of across the board, like level to where um, I was able to just stay consistent. And you know what, God, I will praise you in the hard times. I will lean on you. I will trust in you. And in the good times, I'm going to lift up your name as well and give you the glory. And so um, that really was how I kind of finished my career. I kind of began that journey my junior year in college. And I was really glad God gave me the opportunity to play on the USA team until I was 29 years old, because I would say that kind of perspective shift and identity shift came carried me the rest of my career. Yeah, I really love that because again, I would agree with that a thousand times over, especially about the perspective piece that you talked about there of, you you know, you went into identity and a lot of people I have on the podcast, we talk about identity because that's such a big part of sports is not finding our identity in our sport and something that's consistently going to fail us. But having the bigger picture of knowing who your identity is in, glorifying God. And I, like you said, not allowing, you know, attitude or emotional responses or whatever it is, control or dictate your mindset or how you're acting. Because, you know, a lot of us as athletes, we've been there and we don't like it. After we kind of come out of that, we're like, uh, that wasn't fun. Not a big fan of how I react in that moment. And so love that. And just keeping that really good perspective on, your sport on what God's given you. And I also love that story you said about, you know, you're here mad that, oh, I'm irritated. I had a not great game. And again, I've been there before. I know so many athletes have been there before. And then automatically you get a perspective shift when you see a boy in a wheelchair who is enthusiastic, who comes to your games all the time. And it's like, okay, I'm grateful that I can even walk today. And so Dot, if you could hit on that a little bit too, of just how important it is in these situations and how it affects our reactions and how we deal with it. Yeah, I think that I have always looked at what happens to us. There is something to learn from it, right? Like what is God teaching me? I think the first thing we should go to is the Lord. And the last thing we should go to is the Lord. You know, it's like, do we trust him? Do we trust his word? And I really, I struggle sometimes when I see people in this quest for perfection or for position really is truly not um, living. If that makes any sense, it's like you're living for the world, the things, you know, and, yeah. you know, just in, in study and, and just with the Lord, you've learned, you know, greater is he who is in us than he's in the world. You see, you happen to have your eyes wide open, the removal of spiritual blindness. And there might be people listening going, well, what is all this about? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's really about we have a creator. And how are we going to acknowledge him and represent him and honor him? And, you know, we all are sinners and all fall short. And we're not here to judge anybody, you know, and that unfortunately is the rap that people get that are Christian, right? That, Mm -hmm. oh, we're defining what sin is and there's no way that anybody can, you know, live a life like that, the way that God wants us to. And, and those are just, that's Satan getting into our minds, right? And we think we're all that and our God is ourself and our quest for ambition and for money and for goals and, you know, and awards and recognition and the fame. And, but the thing is, we are all sinners and fall short. And that's why, we needed a savior and God loved us so much. He gave his only begotten son, Jesus, yes. who came down to earth to go and experience humanity, a hundred percent God and hundred percent man to feel it all and to die on the cross for our sins. The perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice needed because God is holy and we are not. And then to the final enemy is death, right? And three days later, Jesus rose from the dead and, you know, he sits right there in the throne. And so you either believe who he says he is or not. And well, God doesn't speak to me. Yes, he does in the Bible. It's right there. Right. And, you know, just dive in and challenge yourself to learn and to take life is just a a learning lesson to get closer to God, Accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and savior, and you'll be living for eternity. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you 
spoke on, there's always something to learn from what we go through and in our experiences. And so there's always something that we can take from the things we experience in this life. And now sometimes I find myself looking at certain situations I don't understand and what was this? What do you want me to learn? And I think there's that, there's that good balance, but knowing that everything that happens in our life, we can take that and we can learn and grow from it because especially our failures and even our successes, nothing in my mind, I always say failure shouldn't be wasted because it's a growth opportunity. It's a learning opportunity. It's an opportunity to grow closer to God, to get into his word more, to know his heart more. And so dive in and challenge yourself to learn more, learn more about yourself and how you react in certain situations, learn more about God's word and his heart. So again, I love that. And to just kind of finish off here and sum up what we've been talking about today, Dot, can you tell me what is one way in your mind to be that 951 athlete, the athlete who is steadfast in their faith, and their goals, and their purpose. Trust the gifts God has given you. And in doing so, prepare yourself to seize every opportunity that he places before you. As an athlete, when you play with freedom, true freedom, which comes from knowing you're, de you're not defined by the outcome of a situation, whether you win or you lose, where you get a home run or strike out, or you strike somebody out as a pitcher or hit someone or walk them, that that does not define you. What defines you is that Christ loves you no matter what, and that you can play with a freedom of just trying to become the best you can be in all aspects of your life. And when you do that, recognizing you'll always fall short, but there might be moments you don't, that you're okay. The striving for perfection, the journey along the way, that's the excitement, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And Leah, can you answer that question too of what is one way athletes can use everything we've talked about today to be that steadfast 951 athlete? Well, I, I feel like, um, and it, early on for me as well, until I really was able to get grounded and have a very solid foundation in God's word and his truth. Um, I feel like if we can just fight for our faith and the time and the desire we put into learning and growing the way we do and the time that is demanded of us in our sports, um, we will get that perspective shift. It will kind of naturally take place because our eyes will be open and our hearts will start to be changed. And so I think it needs to start there because I think what happens is maybe people grow up in church and we kind of have these thoughts that are kind of on the side and it's always been, I, yeah, okay, I know that, I know that, but it, we're not we're not clinging to it. We're not saying, no, this is where I start. This is my foundation. God's word says I am valuable. I am loved. I am worthy regardless of how great I do or how poorly I do. We've got to allow God's voice to be the loudest voice in our life, but that can only happen one if we're in fellowship with other people if we're growing in the bible knowledge by being in bible study or going to church regularly um, and ultimately on our own just opening god's word one thing i love to do is open the bible and highlight verses that stick out to me because a lot of people and i i know when i very first um, started learning God's word. I opened it in the beginning and I was lost. I had no idea what I was reading. And so I tell people, go to the New Testament, start in the book of John if you need to, and just start highlighting verses that stick out to you, that encourage you, that speak a truth into you. And then there were times where things would be busy, but I'd open my Bible and I just go look for a few of those highlighted verses. And when that became the key and the most important thing to me, then softball was able to, to be something that I could go and I could play more freely. I could, I could know that God, you've given me this talent and God, it's a blessing to be on this field. And God, I love the teammates you've given me and the coaches I've been able to learn under. And, you know, this is, this is just such a joy. And yes, I have those hard days, but when I do, you know, Joshua one, nine, the Bible says, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord. Your God is with you wherever you 
go during a really hard time and struggle, you know, offensively for me, I would just stand in the outfield and I would just say that verse over and over again and again. So that now I, all of a sudden, that's my foundation. And I'm just clinging and relying on God during those hard times, which didn't happen until I started needing, you know, to, to have him with me and pre and, and not just in the bad times, but in the good times too, I was able to, to have that type of fellowship and encouragement. So I just encourage athletes, um, to just know how valued they truly are, what God says about you. And when you do that, you can go out and you can play your sport, enjoy it to the fullest, be, be a light and example. I think for me too, when I knew I was finishing my career and I was getting closer, I, no matter how well I played or how poorly I played, I just asked God, God, please allow me to be a witness that just brings your name glory and I, help me to honor you um, in all that I do. And so that meant on the bad days, I knew people would be watching. They're, they're always watching, not, not on the good days. They want to see how we respond in the failures. And I think that's a lot of times when our testimony for who God says we are and, and if we really believe it, that's when it shines the most. So I just encourage athletes to know to know who God says they are. Yes, absolutely. And I want all of our listeners to just grab onto what they're saying of these amazing Christ followers, people, and athletes that Leah and Dot are of trust the gifts God has given you and seize every opportunity and knowing who God says you are, seeing every day as a gift and knowing who to find you and that is Christ and that your identity is in him. And so really, you know, hit that replay button, go back and listen to that because what they both said there at the end, it just, it really sums it all up of where we need to be as an athlete, but more importantly, as a person and a follower of Christ. So Leah and Dot, thank you so much for joining me on today on the podcast. It was so great to have you. And I'm so excited for all of our listeners to hear everything you have to say. So Dot and Leah, thank you again for coming on the podcast today. Thank you, Casey. Thank you so much. And God bless everyone listening. And I tell you, just seize the moment, baby. Just compete, go for it, and just live your life to the fullest for Christ. Thank you so much for having me, Casey. And I just, I'm so encouraged by people like you that are out there making a difference and impacting others. I know how God has used my Olympic career and my platform with three gold medals to allow me to share about him and his love for others. And and I'm thankful for people like you that have that heart as well. Hey everyone, and thank you so much for listening to the 951 podcast. But before you go, please subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media. And then tell all your friends, teammates, or really whoever you want to listen to the 951 podcast so that they can be ignited in their sports and faith journey.